Hey, what's up, Pete? Just want to give you uh, some information, some announcements as we get ready for our worship tonight and also for uh, the message uh, that I have prepared for you. Uh, first of all, um, if you are signed up and have signed up for the Monticello trip, we're leaving Friday at two o'clock. Make sure you got the group text. If you did not, text me so I can send it to you. Uh, we'll be gone Friday afternoon, uh, all day Saturday. Be back a little bit uh, early uh, Saturday evening, uh, mid-Saturday evening, I guess. But all the details, schedule, all that stuff, what you need to bring will be in that group text. So you make sure you need to get that. Also, tonight, today, uh, by midnight, if you want to go to our Real Days of Summer event next Tuesday, to Ponca, Arkansas, we're going to go to Eden Falls, do a hike. And I think we can find a swimming hole so we can kind of get like refreshed. Um, heard there's a nice place there, so I'm looking that up. Uh, so just be ready for that. I'll get some information to you uh, probably uh, to, uh, tomorrow or, or the next day, uh, getting ready for that Tuesday trip. But you've got to sign up tonight uh, by midnight, so make sure you connect that way. And then uh, our next Hanging with Jose is next Wednesday. So this Sunday, you got to sign up for that as well. Uh, looking forward to that. Just got a couple more of those, and then school's going to start. So, um, hey, guys. Loving, loving connecting with you. Love getting together. Had a great week of camp. For those that went to camp, you know what I'm talking about. For those that didn't, man, you cannot miss next year. So we've got to make sure uh, that we're connecting together all along the way. But a uh, big event like camp, man, you can't miss those. God was really moving and speaking. Had a great time. We had some fun. Uh, God really challenged us in his word. So, hey, hope you can pray. You guys are still staying connected. You're getting connected in the word, staying connected to one another. You're getting uh, your essentials uh, shored up so you get ready for school to start back uh, here in the next couple of weeks. Uh, and then we're going to be kind of getting geared up here in the student ministry, possibly after Labor Day. We're going to be looking at Sunday mornings maybe coming back, maybe Wednesday nights. Uh, that's not all confirmed yet, but we'll be talking about that soon enough. Uh, but we also have our interns uh, saying goodbye. They're about to head back to college. So uh, Emily Tripp is, uh, was with us today. Matt Sparks' his last day will be next Wednesday. So if you get a chance to see them, if they're still around, man, give them some hugs. Uh, let them know that uh, you appreciate them, all the things that they've done for us this summer. Uh, love you guys. Got a special uh, bit of worship. Me and my baby girl are uh, doing a song for you, uh, kind of a preview to uh, Summer Sing. Hopefully you guys will be here Summer Sing for Sunday night. Um, as we connect with Pastor Ken, and he's got an assortment of people that are lined up uh, to kind of bring their talents. Uh, we just hope and pray, not so much that we're awesome, that we're good, uh, but that you guys would come alongside and worship the one that is awesome and that he is good. And that uh, uh, what an appropriate song we'll be singing, Burn the Ships, and just thinking about all the things that we've done in the past, all the things that have uh, kind of kept us from being our best. Maybe those things that are not essential in our life, that we need to burn those. And then the message I have is actually a sermon I preached before. It was before camp, but I want to just play it again as we kind of get ready. Because um, next week, it's going to be part two, so I just want to make it seamless. Um, and hopefully you guys enjoyed last Wednesday where we kind of gave you just a preview, just a little snippet uh, of what camp was like. That was our uh, JV evening session. Uh, but we'll be using our senior high sessions uh, uh, for some of our Wednesday night worship uh, virtual elements. So you'll look forward to hearing from Pastor Jeremy uh, and what he shared with us at camp moving forward. So anyhow, got all kinds of good stuff. Biggest thing we got for you when we got some Jesus and we got the love of Jesus for you. So, hey, stay connected, get registered, do your thing, uh, but make sure that doing whatever you're doing is honoring God and we love you. Uh, and we're praying for you. Can't wait to connect with you. So enjoy this bit of worship. Let me pray for us and uh, we'll lead right into worship. And then that will lead us right into our video uh, sermon tonight. Uh, let's pray. Dear God, thank you for your love, your grace. Thank you for your word. Thank you for the opportunity we have to worship you. Father, I pray for our students and pray that they will connect with you in a real way. Uh, Father, just speak to us tonight. Uh, speak to us uh, as we come to you. Father, you promise us that if we look for you and we search you with everything we have, our heart, mind, our soul, we will find you. Father, I pray that when we find you, 
Uh, Father, it would be so great, such a great moment that we will not hold you to ourselves. that we will share that, share you with the world. So Father, thank you for your love. Thank you for Jesus. Uh, thank you for the reason we have to worship. Thank you for the reason we have to learn more about you, that we would be equipped, that we would be called to go and share the good news with the rest of the world. We love you so much. We ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Hey, what's up, my peeps? Me and my baby girl, we're going to do a little number for you. Uh, she loves this song, and uh, I just love singing with her, whether I'm as quality as her playing. It doesn't matter to me. It's my baby girl. So uh, we're going to sing uh, Burn the Ships. Uh, uh, for King and Country, and uh, she's going to play. I'm going to sing, and we hope you enjoy it.
All right, guys, let's get into God's word. Uh, one of the things that I want us to prep for, and I may not get through all of it tonight. I'm just going to go until the Holy Spirit says, hey, that's enough. Let's save some for next week. Uh, but well, I may rock and roll and knock it all out tonight. But one of the things I want to talk about, uh, uh, like I said, next week is camp. And uh, Jeremy Jones, my uh, my best friend since eighth grade, is going to be here to share his heart and share the message that God's playing on his heart about uh, just you getting back to the essentials, about to you back to your uh, the spiritual essentials in your life. And uh, he's going to have a unique perspective uh, just uh, coming from uh, just his background. And I just know that his testimony is pure. I love him. He has been such a, a force and impact and influence on my life. Uh, but I just want to take a moment to be your pastor, uh, to be uh, just a spiritual guide for you. As we think about essentials, I want to talk about some of those key essentials. You'll we'll see those on your camp shirt. Uh, for those that aren't part of camp, you'll be able to purchase some of those shirts. But you'll notice on the back, we have four key words. And those four key words... We're going to be looking at the Word of God. We're going to be looking at prayer. We're going to be looking at the blood of Christ. And we're going to be looking at uh, the Holy Spirit. And those are the four key essentials that I want you to be really thinking about. That when you get to a place uh, that you need to engage spiritually, you need to engage those four things. And uh, they may not be in that order. And they may not always have the same emphasis. But I believe that all four of those elements uh, are things that we need to be focused on. That we need to be encouraged in. That we need to draw from all the days of our life. And uh, one of the first things uh, that is not part of that four that I didn't, that I listed, uh, that I think we have to walk no matter what our circumstance is, and that is that we can't even walk without it. Uh, the fact that Bible tells us that the, the just will live by faith. So that's that other word that is not just essential, it's required. And it's uh, one that as a Christian, that the things that we have through the spirit, the things that we have through the blood of Christ, the things that we have through the word of God, the things that we have through prayer all come through our faith in Jesus Christ. So we're going to be looking at uh, some passages uh, real quick, uh, just in regards to um, the uh, to our uh, looking at uh, our faith. And uh, so, you know, one of the, the greatest passages in all of the, the, the New Testament when it talks about faith is like the faith chapter. You'll hear it called. And uh, that's chapter 11. In fact, I won't read all of this. I'll just read the very beginning. But um, if you were to kind of read on, you would hear about Abraham. You'd hear about uh, Moses. You'd hear about all these pillars, uh, these, these spiritual leaders that they were accounted righteousness. They were accounted because of their faith. And, uh, you know, one of the questions I get asked uh, quite a bit uh, from students is, hey, how are we Christians today? How are we saved? Uh, compared to those that were saved in the Old Testament. Well, guess what? We're saved by the same way. We're saved by the grace uh, and the mercy that we have in Jesus Christ. And it all comes by faith. Faith is this, and we're going to read that. Uh, Hebrews 11, 1 through, say, uh, through 3 says this. Now, faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. For by it, the people of old received their co commendation. By faith, we understand that the universe was created by the word of God, so that what is seen was not made out of things that are visible. They're made from things that are invisible uh, by the one that is invincible. And that's God, our, our Savior, our Lord, our, the creator of the world, the master of the universe, the Alpha, the Omega. I'm telling you that the way that we connect to our God and as we receive the things that he's offered us, and that's the word of God. Uh, how we receive communication from through prayer with the Holy Spirit they receive. And then the most perfect gift ever that gives us the restoration to be able to connect with him in a way that we'll be able to be in his presence when we die is uh, through the blood of Jesus Christ. It all comes by faith. You see, it's, it's faith that we have the assurance in our heart, the peace and the joy that comes to the Holy Spirit that we know that we know that we know that we're going to faith that what God says is true. And his word tells us this, that if we confess by mouth the Lord Jesus Christ, believing that he died and rose again, we shall be saved. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. See, I can say it and I could manipulate it in my mind that logically it makes sense. I can't even get to a point where um, I've received it in my head, but I may not have received it in my heart. Maybe I haven't get that far and I received it in my heart, but I haven't received it in my spirit. I'm just going to tell you this. How do I get to a place where I'm at peace, that all of those are accounted for, that my body, my mind, and my spirit are synced up? It's all by faith. Because I trust who God says he is. I trust in his trueness. I trust in his power. I trust in his control. I trust in his deliverance, his providence for me, that he gave me Jesus, that Jesus died on the cross, and we'll talk about this in a minute, but that his blood was shed for me. And even though I can't see my God, 
even though I can't see even my Jesus, I have an assurance in my heart because I believe that Jesus is who he says he is, that God sent him and that I received not just the salvation through Jesus Christ, but I received the affirmation of the Holy Spirit into my life because I believe and it's all through faith. See, I'm able to receive grace and mercy and the blessings and the presence of God in my life because I have faith. And a lot of times, I'm just going to tell you, students, you guys struggle. In your head, you may have figured it out, but it's taking you a while to get it from your head to your heart. But I'm going to be honest with you. Some people are like, hey, man, that's the end of the road. No, I'm just going to tell you that's not true because I see you guys walk into my office and you're struggling, you're hurting, you're an emotional wreck. And like right here in your heart, right here in your heart, you're like, I feel I, I know that Jesus is Christ. I know Jesus is my Savior. I, I know it in my head. I know it in my heart. But somewhere along the line, your spirit's not connected. And I'm just going to tell you that your spirit doesn't connect because you are not surrendering. Your spirit's not connecting because you're not walking with God. Your spirit's not connected because you're not walking by faith. So you think you got it figured out in your head. You can feel it in your heart. But spiritually, in your spirit, you're not truly surrendered. You're not truly declaring God in your life. You're not declaring number one in your life and that you are held on to things of pleasure, things that are vices in your life. And you're just not surrendering those things. You know, those are three elements I think you need to deal with. I'm just going to tell you, as we talk about the word, the blood, uh, prayer, and we talk about the Holy Spirit, you can't have those things in its fullness without having faith. So I'll just tell you this. You heard me say this. Know that you know that you know, nail it down. Know that Jesus is your Lord, that God is who he says he is. It's okay if you doubt. There are times when I doubt too, but at the end of the day, when I look to his word, when I meditate, when I turn to prayer, it is reassuring to me that God reveals himself and that I sense not just in my mind and in my heart, but in my spirit that I'm at peace because I have faith. And that's my part. It's not so much that I can do anything to earn my salvation, but my response to the truth that Jesus Christ is my Lord and Savior, that he died on the cross, I'm able to faith that that is true, that it is the truth, the ultimate truth. Jesus says, I'm the truth, the way, and the life. No one comes up Father, by me. And in my heart, I'm assured that that is true because Jesus said he says it is. And he says, me and the Father are one. Therefore, I believe that God is as well. So guys, you've got to have faith. It is the assurance of things hoped for. What do we hope for? We hope to be in the presence of the Father one day. We get to be reunited with him. That kind of gets back to that dream thing I tell you about. You know, what do your dreams look like? Are you dreaming in the presence that you're in the being in the presence of God, that you desire to be with him in such a way that all the things of this world could go away, but you are guaranteed, you are looking for God and you're seeking him out. And he says, you'll find me when you seek me with all your heart. So guys, you got to have faith. And then I love this. Ephesians 2, 1 through 10 says, And you were dead in the trespasses and sins in which you once walked, following the course of this world, following the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that is now at work in sons and sons of disobedience, among whom we all once lived in the passions of our flesh, carrying out the desires of the body and the mind, and were by nature children of wrath like the rest of mankind. But, but God being rich in his mercy because of the great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead in our trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By grace, you have been saved. By grace, you've been saved and raised us up with him and seated us with him in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. So that in the coming ages, he might show the immeasurable riches of his grace and kindness towards us in Christ Jesus. Now get this, guys, for by grace, you have been saved through faith, through faith. And this is not of your own doing, it is the gift of God, not a result of your works, so that no one may boast. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand, that we should walk in them. So guys, I'm just going to go through this just a little bit again. And we'll talk about the world that we walk in, this darkness, that we surrender to the power of the air, the spirit that is now working in the sons of disobedience. But God in his rich mercy and his blessings, he made us alive in Christ through grace. And we received that grace and was saved through faith. See, he can, he can prepare the way for us and he can give us Jesus. And that is grace because we don't deserve Jesus. We don't deserve resurrection. We don't deserve uh, to be made white as snow. We don't deserve to have uh, the assurance that we'll be able to spend uh, eternity with God, that we'll c completely not go to a place that's abandoned of God, that's turned away, that we are turned away from God, that we will live 
and the gnashing of teeth and the wailing and we'll, we'll have this this overpowering regret for the times that we spit in God's face and we we'll reject him over and over again. We don't have to live in that because we have Jesus and he can give us that because he gives us grace. He doesn't see our sin. He sees it. He sees Jesus and he sees Jesus covering our sins. And when we think about that, that's grace. But the fact of the matter is this, listen, Jesus is still saving no matter whether you believe him or not. Jesus still died on the cross and overcame death. And he's still the way, the truth and life, whether you believe it or not. And that's grace. Cause God, you know, just like Romans 5, 8 says, Jesus says, even yet while you're sinners, I died on the cross for you. See, the grace happened through the crucifixion. Grace happened when Jesus was sent and God delivered his son and sent for him to die so that all could be saved. That's grace. How do we receive that grace? By faith, believing that it's true, by receiving the gift. Gets back to that analogy you've heard me talk about on Wednesday nights where I got this nice pretty gift with the bows. Grace is that package, right? But until you start ripping that package and receiving it, then you don't actually benefit. You don't actually, you know, you don't actually are impacted by that gift. Yeah, that, that gift, you don't even know what it is. You don't even know what the power is in that gift. You don't even know uh, the pleasure of what that gift may bring to you because at the end of the day, you don't know what it is. You see the shiny package. So you got to know that through faith, we unwrap the package, knowing it's from God, that we receive it. And then we believe in it and then we cherish it like the ultimate treasure that it is. So guys, by grace, we're saved, but it's through faith that we receive grace and it's through faith that we receive salvation. So that's why I keep talking about when we look at back to the essentials that one of the required elements is faith. It's not believing, right? It's not just believing. It's more than that. It's things hope for. You hope for Jesus. You hope for eternity with God because, you know, you may believe in an elevator you may believe in water. You may believe in the things that you are able to be exposed to, things that you can stand in, things that you can taste, but it's through faith that you have hope in things you can't see. And it's hope saying, I, despite what I have in my head, in my heart, in my spirit, I am surrendering to God that he is true, and that he's made a way. But see, what's great about God is this. He doesn't want it to be an unknown God. You know, uh, Paul, spoke to the Romans and he talked about this unknown God. He wants to be known. Not only does he want to be known, he wants to be intimately engaged in your life. In fact, he is intimately engaged in your life. He is already working in you. He's already speaking to you. If you're watching this video, you're watching this sermon, then he's preparing a way for you to hear his word. And I'm just going to tell you that he cares about the details of your life. But the number one detail he cares about is your salvation. And he wants you to receive that grace through faith in Jesus Christ, having faith that Jesus is who he says he is, that he died and he rose and he was resurrected and he defeated death and he paid the ultimate penalty so that you can have life everlasting with God the Father, the one that sent the Son, the one that connected with the Son and said, hey, here's the plan. Let's go. Let's get this thing done. And it wasn't easy at all. It was a horrible death. It was a horrible suffering. It was a horrible crucifixion. But yet by the power of God, by the power in Jesus Christ, by the power of the blood of Jesus, he was resurrected and that blood covered our sins and we've been made white as snow. So guys, we got to have faith. So hope and pray you guys are just empowered by that and just love that uh, you got to know that you know you can just believe. You got to engage with all you have that even though you can't see it, you can't understand it by faith. I am hoping for things that I can't see, hoping for things I can't understand, hoping for things that I can't possibly explain fully but I know that I know that I know that Jesus is my Lord and Savior. Guys, that's faith. When you can stand on something that you can't tangibly hold, you can't completely figure out, you know what? I'm glad I can't figure out God completely. You know, I love to answer questions to students all the time, but you know, every now and then y'all throw me a curveball and I'm like, let me get back to you on that. You know what? I'm glad for that. I'm glad that God is so big that I can't figure him out because that means he's that much more powerful that even when I can't figure it out, he's still in control, he's got me. Just like this pandemic, just like the times that we're in. No matter what this world wants to show me, man, I'm gonna have faith in my Jesus because my Jesus is going to deliver me. I know that, why? Because he said so, and I'm faithing that that is true. So guys, as we have faith, then that allows the door to wide open to get access to the power and to the blessings 
and to the impact that these other essentials can have. So faith is required. And then as a Christian, once we become a Christian, then we have some essentials that we need to cling to. And one of the first things I want you to cling to is the word of God. You can't love God fully. You can't receive God fully until you are in the word of God. I believe by the word of God, one hears and is brought to salvation. And it's the word that draws a man to salvation. It's the word that God's able to speak wisdom into the life of a man. So let's read uh, John 1, 1 through 5 says this. In the beginning was the word. What? In the beginning? What you talking about? The Bible went around and... Oh, the word was in the beginning. The Bible was just a translation of that word put down where we as men could read it. So before the book of Genesis was ever written, the word was in the beginning and the word was God. And the word was God, was with God and was God. I, I, what? I just had a brain explosion right there. <laughs> so I don't know if you fully understand that. I know I don't. But all what I do know is that it said it was in the beginning the word was with God and the word was God. That means the word is God. That means if the word was before the Bible was before we could even manipulate it as men that God had already prepared a way to send his message to us, to give us instruction for life, to encourage us, to lift us. And that he was the embodiment of that word was the embodiment of him because it says the word and God, they were the same. Um, he was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of the men, and the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has no power to overcome it. See, darkness can't overpower the light. We have light in God's word. We have life in God's word, and all things were made through him. So the atheist made through God. The worshiper made through God. All things, everything. Good and bad. You know, we always kind of throw darts at God and say, you know, why'd you let the sin in this world? He didn't let the sin in the world as like a like an evil, you know, warlord that just kind of says, hey, let's just see if these guys can handle this pandemic. Right. Can, you, can they handle this heat? Can they handle this uh, curveball? That's not that's not the God I serve. Because see, God loved us enough. He gave us free choice, the freedom to choose him. And it was us that brought sin into the world because we chose to reject him. We chose to make him number two. We chose ourselves to be satisfying ourselves. And we say, hey, you know, Adam and Eve, they did that. That's not me. Man, you better shut your mouth. If I took John and placed him in place of Adam, I guarantee you John's going to fail. If I took Judy in place uh, of Eve, I guarantee you Judy's going to fail. I'm just going to tell you, it is all inherent within us. It says that for all of sin, if I show the glory of God, why is that? Because within our own nature as human beings, once we're given the freedom to choose that we just like natural animals, they want to survive. We have not just a survival instinct. We have a me instinct. We want to do what we want, when we want to do it, how we want to do it. And as much as we want to do it, I don't have to ever teach a kid to say mine. I don't have to ever teach a kid that, give me what I want. Now they may not be able to speak it without the language, right? But I'm just going to tell you, you can walk to a, a group of kids that don't know English at all, don't know words at all, but you go try and take one of their things. Mm -mm, that's mine. They're going to grab that thing. Even if they don't say it with their mouth, they're going to say it with their eyes and their body language. Because why? Because in our spirit, we want what we want. And we feel like we're number one. And we feel like we should have all the things we want. Now I'll just tell you what, right now, it just seems like there's a lot of people out there spreading some hate because they're not getting what they want. Sounds like a bunch of spoiled rod brats to me. Cause I'm just going to tell you, if you want what you deserve, man, you better be careful on that because God will send you what you deserve and it ain't going to be pretty because we all deserve death for the wages of sin is death. If all sin falls short of the glory of God and the wages of sin is death, then hey, what do we deserve? Death. Thank goodness we have grace, right? Jesus Christ. Amen. That's what I'm thinking. So there's the word. The word was in the beginning. Man, everything is through the word. That's where we get life. That's where we get light. So that's a very powerful passage. And then, you know, my favorite book, Romans. Here we go. Romans 10, 14 through 17. Oh, when I talked about this a minute ago, I love this passage. It says, how then will they call on him whom they have not believed? And how are they to believe in him who they have never heard? And how are they to hear without someone preaching? And how are they to preach unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who preach the good news. But they have not all obeyed the gospel. For Isaiah says, Lord, 
who has believed what we have heard from us. So faith comes from hearing and hearing through the word of Christ. Guys, we're each and every one of us. I just believe that God is calling on our lives so that we can be saved. And he's speaking to us through his word. Um, as I, this now, I'm just sharing Romans 10, Romans 3, Romans 5, Romans 6. I'm sharing all these different passages kind of talking about sin and uh, you know what, what Jesus did for our sin. They died on the cross even yet while we're sinners. And now here that even right before uh, uh, passage uh, verse 14 and, and Romans 10, 9, you've already heard me say, if you confess by mouth, believe in the Lord Jesus, that he died and rose again, you shall be saved. It's saying this, that from faith comes from hearing. From hearing, when we hear the word that we have faith in what we've heard and that hearing comes, it's like a supernatural hearing almost because it comes through the word of Christ and it brings power. It's not just like listening to music. You get moving, right? When you hear that, your, your jams, that's my jam right there. I want to, whoo, it gets me moving, right? Listen to me. It's more than that. It's like a spiritual engagement. It's like God intimately yokes with you when he shares his gospel with you the good news and you're like man that is good and i want that and you believe it because you hear it and so that faith comes and because of faith we have it through god's word so i'm just telling you man this is awesome just think about the power of god's word the word of christ that the word that we have is that christ christ meaning savior meaning that he came and he died surrenders life for you to pay the ultimate price to pay for your sins so you can have eternity in him Guys, if that's not essential that you need, man, you need to get a spiritual paddle and just beat yourself, right? You just need to just get in the corner, put yourself in a timeout. Because at the end of the day, guys, if you ain't spending time in God's word, you're not learning about him. You're not learning about what is what he wants for you in your life. You don't, you're not learning about who God is. Man, if you love God and you're going to spend time to figure it out. You know, I remember dating my wife. Uh, you know, here I am dating Miss Debbie and Man, every time I got to, to connect with her, talk to her, hang out with her, I was constantly trying to learn something, so learn something about her, what she liked, what she didn't like. Because if she didn't like it, I didn't do it anymore, right? Or I didn't give her that, or I didn't buy her that. But if she liked something, man, I'd buy her that same thing over and over again. If she liked something, we'd go do that over and over again. If she liked to talk about something, that's what we talked about. Man, I wanted to please her. Same way with God, guys. Man, you get in a relationship with God, there's no way you can know all of it. But if you love him, then you're going to find out what he likes. You're going to find out what he's about. You're going to find out the things to do and things not to do, the things to engage in, things not to engage in. And why do you do that? Because you love him. So what's your time in God's word saying about your love for God? If you spend 15 minutes and it's been just now, the 15 minutes we spent going to God's word, is that the only time you spend in God's word? So you're waiting for me to chew up the food and spit it out so you can you can have regurgitated food man i don't know about you but when i have a steak i don't want anybody chewing my steak for me i want to eat it fresh i want it hot so i'm just praying that even as i share with you and i pray that god's speaking to you as i speak that you're having your time where you get a fresh steak a spiritual steak where you start cutting in and you're diving in you're just tearing that thing up because you love it and you love him and you want to learn more about him and you're ready to engage so guys it's so important uh, to be in God's word. And this is the last thing I'm going to talk about blood. And I'm going to say prayer and spirit for next week. Uh, not next week, but two weeks from now. So here's the deal. Next one is the blood. We talked about the word. The word brings salvation. Uh, that the hearing, we have the hearing um, that draws faith in so that we have faith in Jesus Christ. But we got to talk about the blood. So let's read Ephesians 1, 1 7 says this. In him, we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of our trespasses, according to the riches of his grace. Man, isn't it funny how these words just connecting? We were talking about faith, and then we started talking about the word. It pointed back to faith and talking about grace. And now we're talking about blood, and it's pointed back to grace. Why? Because it's grace that we receive by the redemption that we have in Jesus Christ. You know, his blood was shed, and it wasn't just something that was just given. It was something that was sacrificed. See, Jesus was sacrificed. Just like in the Old Testament, it was a need for sacrifice for something to be cleansed or something to be imparted righteous. We had to have blood shed for us. And luckily, Christ came and stand in the gap for us. And it wasn't our blood that was shed. It was his blood that was shed. And in this passage, he's saying, through his blood, we have forgiveness of our trespass. We have forgiveness of our sins. 
Guys, I know blood is gory, and if you ever watched The Passion of Christ, you ever watched some illustration of the crucifixion, you see God, Jesus' blood, he's got the crown of thorns, blood coming down, he's got, you know, blood coming out maybe through the side where they pierced his side, just just his body all tore and snared, it's just so, you know, it's like gross, you just don't want to see it, and it's just, it's just really appalling to you. I want you to know that that had to happen so that your sins could be forgiven, that his blood had to be shed, his innocent blood. So he didn't do anything to deserve that, anything. He walked without sin. His blood did not have to be shed for his sake. His blood was shed for your sake. And that because we have that blood that was shed, we have redemption. We have been made where we were broken, we were ugly, we were tattered, we were torn, and we've been redeemed. We've been made new again. We've been uh, collected as a bad debt that's now been made in the good. And that those sins that caused death sentence to be placed on our hearts and our heads, that the wages of sin is death, that those wages have been paid, and that we don't have to walk in death anymore, but we can walk in life. So guys, we've got to have Jesus' blood. Got to have Jesus' blood. And in fact, the last passage we'll have for tonight, 1 John 1, 5 through 7 says this, This is the message we have heard from him and proclaim to you that God is light and in him no darkness at all. If we say we have fellowship with him while we walk in darkness, we lie and do not practice the truth. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another. And listen to this, guys. And the blood of Jesus, his son, cleanses us from all sin. And we talked about faith. So I'll tell you, it takes a lot of faith for us to believe in that. That his blood cleanses us from all sins. Well, now listen, I'm a nerd. I mean, I love science. I love math. I love history. I love reading stuff. I love studying stuff. And I've studied this for a long time in my life. And I, I believe it. I faith it. And I proclaim it. I preach it. I don't know how it works. I don't know how the blood cleanses us. All I know is that God said it is. Jesus did it. And it's happened. And I'm proclaiming the truth. I'm having faith that God says it's what's happening needed to happen. That God had laid down the work. This is his world. He figures out the rules. And the rules is this. The wage of sin is death. Right? But the, the gift that we have uh, in Jesus is everlasting life. And we have that because he died and his blood was shed for us. And his blood covers our sins. That his blood, the blood of Jesus, cleanses us. Guys, I remember when I was uh, not a Christian. And I, I tell you all the time, <laughs> wouldn't let you date me. I sure wouldn't let you hang out with me. I just wouldn't. I was not a good kid. And I'm just telling you, when I came to salvation, the knowledge of Jesus Christ, and I actually received Jesus is my Lord and Savior, and I received the power of the Holy Spirit. I just received him in his fullness, and I wanted him so bad. I desired him so bad. I'm just going to tell you, uh, I felt so unworthy because I knew how dirty I was. It wasn't just on the outside, guys. It was on the inside. It was in my mind. It was in my heart. It was in my, my skin. It, it, was, it was everything I was about was about Robert. It was about what I desired. It's about what I wanted. And even though I may have intentions for good, I didn't have the power to do good because the power to do good is in the righteousness of the Holy Spirit that we receive that, that power. I could be good to people, but the, ultimately I was doing that just so I received favor. So people would like me. So I could have love. Maybe you receive the things I wanted. Maybe it was a thing. Maybe it was a person. Maybe it was a thing with a person. Whatever it may be, I'm just telling you this. It was the things of this world. I'm just going to tell you the things of this world always make you feel empty. It makes you feel dead. And I remember thinking... Man, Jesus, his blood has made me clean. Man, I remember just thinking, white as snow. What can make me white as snow? Nothing but the blood of Jesus Christ. And when I thought about that, and I think about how his blood can cleanse me, man, I thought that's a powerful stuff. You know, it's like bleach. It's like spiritual bleach. You know, like almost to a point that if I had that spiritual bleach on, like my tan is my dirtiness. Man, I'd be Caucasian. I'd be like my mama. I'm just saying. You know what I mean? Like, it changed me. Like, it changed me. You know, if you were to see me and I, I, you, you walked in, you're like, hey, Robert was Filipino yesterday. He had brown hair, brown eyes, had dark hair. And then you came in the next day and I had blonde hair, blue eyes, freckles, and really light blonde hair. You'd be like, that's the same Robert, but he sure looks different. I'm going to tell you, spiritually, that's how it was. It was like night and day. So he made me clean and my desires for me died. Doesn't mean I didn't battle those things even after a Christian. I'm just gonna tell you, they didn't have power over me. They didn't have victory over me. 
because I pressed and I lived by faith and I went and drew from the water and I drew from the well and I drew from the essentials and I drew from his word and I remembered his blood and I just focused on how his blood cleanses me because there's nothing more crippling in a Christian's life than for them to fall short every day. Most of us do. There's probably not a single day I've ever gone by that I haven't sinned. But when that happens, that we allow Satan or we allow ourselves because of our ignorance, to be honest with you, that we convince ourselves that we can't, we're not worthy. We can't be redeemed again. I'm just going to tell you, you're, the blood that Jesus shed for you, that spiritual bleach that changed me in such a radical way, that blood covered me yesterday, today, and forevermore. And that his grace and his mercy and his and his um, his redemption that I receive, it's eternal. So it's like his blood constantly floods over me. It constantly cleanses me. And it gives me power. It gives me strength. And when I recognize that and I relish in that, when I fill my cup up with his word in him, then I don't live out this life of defeat, this life of, oh, woe is me, or this life of anxiety, or this life of worry, or this life of, you know, doubt. I live in truth. I live in spirit. Man, I'm able to worship in that same way. So guys, I love you guys. That's probably the last essential I'm going to talk about. We'll get together again in a couple of weeks and we'll talk about uh, prayer. We'll talk about the spirit. Man, I'm fired up. So I hope you're fired up too. I pray that you are dumping all that junk out of your cup. You're getting in God's word and then you're letting that blood of Jesus come and cleanse you so he can just fill you up with all that good, good, good Jesus and let that good Jesus flow on out of you and love on other people. Hey, let's get back to the essentials. Let's not be lazy. Like I said, I'll just bring this one question up and we'll close out with this. When you think about the blood of Jesus, do you think that you're white as snow? Do you think that you're cleaned? Do you think that you have been radically changed? Have you been made from a Filipino to just a blonde hair, blue eye? That's what my mom looked like. I mean, to the T. I'm just saying, have you been radically changed? And then let's just think about another thought. If the time you spend in God's word is a reflection of your love to God, how much love are you demonstrating to God? Hey, that's right there. That's real right there. That's real, guys. We got to get back into the word. We got to be hungry and thirsty for God's word. And I pray that you'll get back to the essential, especially if we get into camp. We'll finish this thing up in a couple weeks. Let me say this. I love you. I'm praying for you. Hey, connect and just listen to me. If you can't recognize the blood has radically changed you, you may need to talk to me. Maybe you haven't been changed. If your reflection of God's love is that high, because you ain't spending but that much in God's word, maybe you need to get in it today. All right? Go look at those passages. Go back. Rewind this video. See the passages I went through. Dive in and get, get hungry. Get that steak. Cut it yourself. Eat it warm. Eat it hot. Don't let me eat it and chew it and regurgitate it. You're not a bird. Okay? You're not a baby bird. I don't want to throw up in your mouth. That's gross, isn't it? Oh, ugh, God, Lee, come on now. Nobody wants that. Eat the word for yourself. You know that you know because God has spoken to you. Hey, I'm going to love you right now by praying for you, and we're going to engage. Looking forward to it. Let's go. Dear God, just thank you for your word. Thank you for uh, your blood. Thank you the blood that was shed for us. And, Father, thank you that we have all these things through faith in Jesus Christ our Lord. And, Father, thank you for the grace that you offered us and that the faith that we have to unpack, unwrap, and receive that awesome gift. Father, thank you that you love us so much that in the beginning, your word was there. In the be beginning, Jesus was there. Father, you were one with your word. And Father, as we receive your word, we receive your power, we receive your truth, and we can live it out. We can share the good news with those around us. Father, I pray for tonight that lives are radically changed. And I pray for this week, as we prepare for camp next week, that we will engage you in such a real way that lives will be transformed, that literally, that analogy that I gave, that people will see us and that they will recognize us, but man, we'll be so changed, radically changed, because you are living in us. Father, just thank you for that. Thank you for that testimony. Thank you that I can look back to the day, June 5th, 1993, that I was forever changed, that I stopped loving the world and I started loving you and you started teaching me and training me and showing me and filling my heart with your dreams and filling my heart with your passions. And I had a desire to come find you and seek after you and have daddy time. And Father, I relish in that time. And I cannot wait because the hope that I have, the faith that I have is that one day, the thing that I do not see, 
I will see you and I will see you face to face and I will embrace you in a way I've never embraced you before. And I desire that more than anything. God, just thank you for your love. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your grace. And thank you for your word. We ask that in Jesus' name. Amen. Hey, guys, I love you guys. Talk to y'all later. Bye.